for the coffee. Uh, I'm a paid consultant for lipogens. And so I, I drew this slide in the late 1980s. And, and it was based on the fact that I could make these cells from marrow go down all these lineages on a Petri dish. And this is hugely important if you want to do tissue engineering, if you want to take a scaffold and make a tissue in vitro and then surgically transplant it. But the real regenerative medicine aspect of this has only to do with the MSCs which are at the top of this uh, diagram. So uh, you can't read the small print, but every single tissue of your body has more or less been published as a source for MSCs. So skin, liver, kidney, wh whatever tissue you name, uh, MSCs have been isolated from them and in vitro uh, been, been pushed to become osteoblasts or, or fat or cartilage. What's missing from this diagram is the fact that every one of those tissues had blood vessels. And, and what we now know how to do, whether it's mechanically or with enzymes, we know how to kick those perivascular cells off the blood vessels, put them in culture, and make them do all these dances in vitro. So MSCs are multipotent on a Petri dish, but not in vivo. So I'm going to tell you what they are now is, is their perivascular cells. So this is actually a blood vessel in heart. And so uh, this morning when Dr. Tremolata took his blood pressure medication, this is the cell that reacted. So if you want high blood pressure, that cell squeezes the blood in that uh, vessel. If you want low blood pressure, it relaxes. So that's the vasoactive agent in your in your um, vasculature. So every cell you see, every cell is a pericyte, a potential MSC. Every cell you see is a pericyte. Every cell you see is a pericyte. Are you getting bored? Every cell you see is a pericyte. How clever have I been? I haven't told you what tissues they're in. So they're in every single tissue of your body. So when that blood vessel breaks or becomes inflamed, then that becomes an MSC. This is a paper, you have to read it, this is a very boring scientific paper. The key to this paper is on the bottom, a, a labeled pericyte uh, subjected to aspects of aging, high fat diet, which means a lot of fat being made, or, or an injury model, those labeled cells stayed as pericytes, did not go into that new tissue. So in vivo, pericytes don't differentiate, even though they can become uh, MSCs. So blood vessel breaks, pericyte comes off, differentiates into a new cell called an MSC, which becomes activated. And, and, and now you got to look at me for a second. This is a blood vessel. This is a pericyte. Blood vessel breaks or becomes inflamed. This cell comes off, pericyte comes off and becomes an MSC, a different cell. And from its front, it makes a curtain of molecules which stop your overaggressive immune system from interrogating the injured tissue behind. It's your first line of defense for stopping autoimmune reactions from starting. So it's immunomodulatory. And from the back of the cell, a different group of molecules are synthesized, which set up a regenerative microenvironment. They stop scar from forming. They stop cells from dying from ischemia. So if you break a blood vessel, no, no oxygen to that tissue, there's ischemia. Those cells which normally die, the MSC makes molecules which protects them. The MSC makes molecules that brings in endothelial cells so you get new blood vessels. And guess what the MSC does? It becomes a pericyte again. That's the definition of an MSC, a cell that can become a pericyte again. And the other thing it does, it makes molecules that cause the intrinsic stem cell to divide and to differentiate. So if you, if, you, if you have a neural stem cell, 
or you have a cardiac stem cell, or you have a liver stem cell, the MSC can make molecules to make those cells divide. So one of the mistakes we made early on is that the hematologist told us that these cells came from stroma, from the connective tissue. There is no connective tissue in marrow. There are lots of blood vessels, big sinusoids, so that's where these cells come from. So I've changed the name to medicinal signaling cell because everything, every single thing I've told you has nothing whatsoever to do with stem anything. So again, um, uh, this cell is a drugstore for, for what ails you. If you go to this uh, website, uh, clinicaltrials.gov, and you put mesenchymal stem cells into the search engine, what you'll see is worldwide there's 745 clinical trials using MSCs. There's about the same number in Europe of uh, clinical trials as in the States. This is the States. Uh, this is not a political uh, map. I'm not interested in red states in case you want to know what my politics are. I love red in this map because it's the highest number of clinical trials in, in, uh, in those states. These are all the clinical symptoms. I just copy-pasted them. This is an eye test for all the guys in the back so, to read those. If you can't read them, uh, I put it in larger type. What you see is an incredible array of clinical symptoms for which MSCs are being used. All of the activities of these clinical symptoms are immunomodulatory or regenerative or both. And, and that's what they do. So MSCs dock at sites of broken blood vessels. If you put them in, uh, into your bloodstream, they go to those sites. They're immunomodulatory and, and regenerative. And what they're doing is managing the patient's own capacity to regenerate those tissues. So uh, there's 40 or 50 companies I'm only going to talk about lipogens because they pay me. Um, and, and, and also, uh, the, uh, it, I, I hate to say this in his presence, but the design of this is by Tremolat is quite brilliant for a plastic surgeon. It just <laughs> kills me that, that somebody with no engineering background would design something so good. So, so what he did is he has this tube which has saline in it. So they put liposuction in, and what's here is uh, some stainless steel wires which are crisscrossed to further disperse that liposuction as it, as it comes into this saline solution. He also has in there a Fibonacci number of uh, stainless steel balls. The, the number is magic only because he's Italian and he had to use a Fibonacci number, but the, what those do is bang around and further mechanically disperse disturb this, and, and actually it's got to be a bartender in order to be an uh, orthopedic surgeon to make lipogens because it's all in the wrist, actually. The key thing is in the wrist. The other genius thing about this is the exit port has 500 micron holes, and, and I'll show you why that's important. So, so you, you put the liposuction material in, you, you, do, you do the martini dance, and then what you do is you, you bring saline back into this, and what you're doing is basically washing out all of the broken cells, all of the grease, all of the junk, monocytes, all of the junk that you don't want, and what collects up here at the bottom, or when you invert it at the top, are live adipocytes, uh, MSCs and, and some broken blood vessels. So now you pull them through and, and isolate them once they've gone through this 500 micron hole. And what you get are 500 micron balls of live adipocytes with MSCs inside. And how do I know there are MSCs inside? Because obviously I put these in culture. And what you see is, of course, the uh, adipocytes don't go to the bottom of the plate because they have fat droplets in it, so they, they float in the, in the culture medium. And, and five to seven days later, what you see at the bottom of the plate are MSCs walk out, tired of being encased with all these 
fat uh, adipocytes, and, and then if that happens to be your knee, they've uh, withstood the incredible acute inflammatory response of having put a couple of mLs of this material in your knee, and now after that's all calmed down, the MSCs come out uh, and, and do their magic. So what, what's important and what we discussed a little bit is we know, and, and I don't have time to discuss it, but we know the chemistry of what holds that, that um, pericyte to the basement membrane, and it's PDGFBB, and that's the active agent in PRP. So the medicinal properties of PRP are actually an MSC um, uh, 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 effect. So this is the original hypothesis diagram. What's wrong with this, how we screwed up originally, is that the MSCs come from pericytes. It makes a huge difference how you think about them. So clearly, you have to keep the nomenclature clear. They're MSCs, they're medicinal signaling cells, but they're clearly not NOT, not stem cells. And um, I, I, I want to just spend one minute, um, I, I, I know I'm going over on time, but um, we prepared a poster for Nature. You can download it from that website has all the newest information about MSCs, and buried in this poster is the key element in the middle of this poster, which is that um, every tissue in your body, the stem cell, that tissue-specific stem cell, is sitting in contact with a blood vessel, with an endothelial cell, and next to it, guess who's next to it? A pericyte MSC giving it very specific molecules. This is the same in liver, this is the same in brain, this is the same in bone marrow, and we put bone marrow here because in this case, a quiescent hemopoietic stem cell and a very active hemopoietic stem cell are sitting next to these pericyte MSCs, and these pericyte MSCs are synthesizing specific molecules for those cells. So their signatures, their molecular cell surface signatures are different. I can sort those two MSCs out of there, and there's a third MSC sitting up here, which is already in the osteoblast lineage. So probably in bone marrow, there are four or five or six different kinds of MSCs which do different things. And the last point I want to make is every one of you was taught in medical school that your sympathetic... Um, nervous system controls your blood vessels, right? Everybody was taught that. Wrong. That's wrong. The sympathetic innervation is to perivascular cells. Those are the only contractile elements on the blood vessels. Those are the guys who are responding to these sympathetic neurons, not the endothelial cells on the blood vessels. So again, um, I, I don't have time to talk about this, but the MSC pericyte grabs melanoma and pulls it into marrow. If, if melanoma goes to bone, you have six months to live. It's lethal. So the melanoma perverts the functioning of MSCs, and, and we're studying the chemistry of this to figure that out. So, so for those of, us, those of you who care about MSCs, go get this. I, I think cell-based therapy, and MSCs in particular, are going to change the way medicines practice. Some guy in, in rural England gets a heart attack, helicopter picks him up and takes him to a major medical center. Ten years from now, he's going a mile down the road to an urgent care center, getting a bag of MSCs, and they're going to hook it up with interven intravenously, and that's going to be the total therapy for acute myocardial infarct. So you, you heard it here first. Uh, my favorite quote is, of, since I'm in England, Winston Churchill, which is that cell-based therapy is at the end of the beginning. We've had a long stretch, and now I think with the clinical trials that are in play and with products like lipogens, it's going to be used. 
I, I teach in two courses. One is a business course, which the big pharma business models don't work for cell-based therapy. And so I invite a whole bunch of people in to talk about the new models. This, uh, this year it's uh, in July in Toronto. Um, and also every two years we give a course from the uh, National Center for Regenerative Medicine on MSCs. Um, and, and again, all the research in my lab supported by the National Institutes of Health. And there's clearly a lot of people at the Skeletal Research Center who do the work. I'm clearly the mouthpiece. Thank you.